Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Acer Aspire 3. The exact model is an Acer Aspire 3 A315-41 series. The subdivision model is an R7 WT. And in this video I'm going to go over how you can open it up and how you can clean up, repaste the CPU and GPU in here. You should be doing your repasting every couple of years or if you're using extensive hours daily, I would recommend you to do it once a year at least. Because the thermal paste, it does get dry and it, it will not conduct the heat um, very well, so and it's going to overheat. And by doing the repacing, you're not going to modify anything in the system or anything like that, so it's just safe to do it. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop. I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using for this service. Tool number one, it's a screwdriver set. I recommend you to guys grab the iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there. And they are, these are made out of the S2 class steel bit. And they will last you many years. Here we're going to be using a Phillips number one and a Phillips double zero. So let's get this one right over here. First, we're going to go Phillips number one. Also, if you get the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers, a few other stuff. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. 0.3 millimeters, they're really durable and they will not scratch. A good thermal paste, I'll be using Arctic MX4. You can use an Arctic MX5. Or if you want to go over the board and overkill, you can go with the best in the market, which is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. I'll leave the link in the video description in case you want to get yours. In this case, we're going to be using Arctic MX4. And the other tool is, or item would be workshop towel. One sheet of the workshop towel. And very importantly, an alcohol isopropolic or isopropolic 99% plus. Make sure it's 99%, otherwise do not use it. And with all this on hand, let's get it started. You can grab a little used toothbrush if you want, a curved or straight tweezers. Again, it's useful to have. With all this on hand, let's get it started. First thing first, we're gonna remove all the screws that we see on the bottom cover here. There's a whole bunch of them on the cover in here and cover right there in the middle, everything. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. Also, if you find my videos useful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It does help and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. All right, now that we removed all the screws, just double check, make sure all the screws are removed. What do you want to do? Uh, you don't have to remove this cover, but it's good to do it. So if you want to clean it up, you stick your finger there or just the back of the thing, just push it up and it will just release it. It's not necessary, but you can remove it to clean it up. Same thing with a hard drive cover. This one, you do have to remove it out, just yank it up really hard. Now we're going to switch to our Phillips double zero and we're going to remove the four screws on the caddy. These are the black color screws. All right, once you remove the four screws in here, all you need to do is to grab these flip things right in here and lift up from the back side gently. Do not yank the flex cable right there. What you want to do, you want to make sure it's not stressing like this and you just want to separate the adapter from here very gently don't over pull otherwise you're going to rip the flex cable right on it okay just be careful with it okay now this is your hard drive so we're going to keep this in one side now we're going to remove the bottom cover to remove the bottom cover all you need to do is to grab your opening tool and we are going to start by putting it between the top and the bottom cover right there, the opening tool, the guitar pick. And we're just going to twist it every two meters, and two centimeters, and you want to hear that click sound. So that the clips are getting loose, do that all around in the front and the side.
go all the way back to the corner. I'm gonna do right over here by the USB ports. And we are just gonna lift up the cover. Just wiggle it around and the cover should come out pretty easy. There we go. Okay. These plastics, they do get really dried up after a while. Let's say, for example, this one right here, I removed the screw from here, but the base for the screw, it does break out really easy sometimes. You can just grab a, a double side, I mean, you can grab a tape or any type of epoxy and you can just uh, tape this one, glue this one back on it, and that's it. This nothing has to do with the way that you open it or anything like that. It's just because of the tension of the screw, it just breaks the base of it. That's the only thing. Even if you don't put the screw for this one, it's fine. This is just a cover to hold the whole thing in place, and that's it. But if yours is break sometimes, don't worry about it. It's, it's very, very normal. I've been doing this for over 17 years. They do break, they do dry off, and don't worry. All right. Now you can take the bottom cover and clean it up. And right away you can see this laptop only comes with one fan. Sometimes they do have two fans. If you have a dedicated GPU, the extended heatsink goes over here and you will have a two fan. But in here the jack is not even installed on the, on the motherboard. All right, first thing first, we're gonna disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, put your two fingers right at the back of the connector and pull it back straight, and that's how you can disconnect the battery. Next, we're gonna use the tweezer to disconnect the cable for the fan. Put it the same way that you did in here, but I can stick my finger there, it's too small. I'm gonna stick the guitar, the tweezers, I'm gonna push it back so I don't damage the cables. Detach this. Uh, Captain, I mean, is scaffers tape. Otherwise, it's not gonna work, just trash it, you don't need it. Otherwise, the tape is gonna go over the fan. So what are we gonna do right now? We're gonna use the same Phillips number one. We're gonna remove two screws for the fan. And we're gonna remove three screws for the heatsink. Okay, you wanna grab the heatsink from here and you're gonna lift it up. Do not lift it up from here, otherwise you're gonna break it. And look, once you rotate it backward, look at all this clogged up dust in here. See, that's why it's overheating and it does not perform well and the thermal paste is really, really dry. Okay, so we're gonna take it outside, we're gonna blow some air through here and toothbrush and clean it up. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna clean up the thermal paste. All right, now that we clean up the fan with a toothbrush and compressed air, there we have it, it's nice and clean. We're gonna clean up the thermal paste on the motherboard and on the heat. We're gonna grab a little bit of the work cup towel, grab yourself the alcohol, dip it in there and just rub it off the heat sink. and uh, remove the excess of the thermal paste. You don't need to clean around the CPU as long as you clean the die, that's fine. But if you wanna go crazy, you can just clean it up all around, but there's no issue for the performance or anything like that. Now that we clean up the CPU, we're gonna out grab our thermal paste. We're gonna do one tiny line, and we're gonna do one tiny line on the CPU going across like that, and that's more than enough. All you need to do is to grab the heatsink, put down the fan side down, and bring it down evenly, and do not lift it up again, and you're gonna put the screws. Doesn't matter how you, what orientation the screws you go, they do have a number one, two, three, but doesn't matter as long as you put it because it's a triangle. If it was like a four screws, then you have to put cross each other. But on this case, doesn't matter how you start it. The thermal paste will spread evenly across. Put 
put the three screws for the uh, heatsink and the two screws for the fan. Okay, next once we put the screws, now we're gonna put the connector for the fan. People usually forget this one, it's slide it straight inside the fan connector right there. And the last thing down here, it's to grab the cable for the battery. Make sure, I will always say double make sure that you push it evenly inside the jack, don't push it sideways and you just wanna pinch it right there. And that's how you do it. And the last thing here is to just grab the bottom casing. Again, I'm gonna reopen this one later on and we are gonna put a glue, some super glue here and we put this one away here. And again, it's not important, but if you want to, go ahead and do it. All right, or you could just put it on top here and screw it down right on top and then that's it. Then just put it over the cover. All right, put the cover right on top of it. Squeeze it down, make sure you hear those nice big click sounds. Once you hear those click sounds, what you wanna do, you wanna grab the hard drive, gently, you wanna put it right, the connector, right there and then you want to set it down make sure you put the head side down on there in there and then squeeze the back end down put the four screws for the caddy and then put the covers on and put the bottom screws again i hope that you guys like this video and helped you guys out if you have any questions or requests feel free to leave them in a video comment i'll try to answer them as soon as i can as always thanks for watching and i hope you guys like this video I'm just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws and the covers. The covers just go in by pressure. You just have to pressure them down and that's it. So I'm gonna be left over with one screw that I'll put it after once I fix up the cover.